Today we're going to look at part 3 of the 2016 Advanced Higher Chemistry Multiple Choice section. We'll be looking at questions 21 to 30 and this will be the last in the three videos for this. So here we have question 21 and we have four molecules and we are to find the line in the table which shows the reaction sequence between the four molecules. So we have a reduction, a dehydration and an addition. One of the clues I would look for is the addition here. That has to mean that Y is your molecule with the double bond if you're going to be adding something onto it. So this one here must be Y. If you have a look at Y, that straight away gives you the answer as being C, but we'll just check that that fits. So Y um, is this one with the double bond here. If we go backwards, we must have dehydrated to get to Y, which means we must have had an alcohol. So um, X must be two, and that fits in the table. And to form X, we had a reduction. So reduction means that we must have had a ketone. So this must be W, which also fits. And then finally, when we're adding on, we're adding something on to the double bond, and it happens to be HCl that we're adding. So this one must be Z, and that fits as well. So that's C as our answer. Question 22, which of the following statements about benzene is not true? So let's draw out benzene. So benzene is a special molecule with an unusual structure. We have the ring of six carbons. All of the bonds are the same length within this. So that C is true. Um, all of the carbons are sp2 hybridized, so this is a planar arrangement here. So A is true. And um, it's susceptible to attack by electrophilic um, reagents. So it undergoes um, electrophilic substitution reactions. So this is true. But it cannot be attacked by bromine. It doesn't undergo addition reactions um, easily. So D is our answer. So question 23, we have a reaction here. We've got a haloalkane reacting with an OH- and this is a nucleophilic substitution. We're replacing the Br with an OH- um, to get this alcohol here. And it proceeds via an SM1 mechanism, which would make sense because this is a tertiary haloalkane. And it's asking what effect will doubling the concentration of hydroxide ions have on the rate of reaction. So an SM1 mechanism means we have substitution, nucleophilic, and it's first order kinetics. Now the first order kinetics is in relation to this one here, where the Br minus will fall off before the nucleophile will attack. So what effect will doubling the concentration of hydroxide ions have on the reaction rate? Absolutely nothing at all, because it's this one here which controls the rate of reaction. So A, it will have no effect. 24. Which of the following shows the splitting pattern for the circled H atom in a high resolution NMR spectrum? So the rule that we use is the N plus one rule. So that is you've got your hydrogen, both of these are identical, and you look at the carbon beside it and how many hydrogens are attached. So we have three hydrogens and uh, we do three plus one. So it's going to be four lines. So the answer is going to be C. And the reason that we get the splitting with the different heights so if we start with our hydrogen and it splits with the first one that's on the next one that's attached. Now all three of them are identical and then it splits with the next one. So that says with one, two and then it splits with the next one. So that we end up with this splitting pattern. So you've got a height of one, a height of three, a height of three and a height of one. And that's why we get this um, splitting pattern. So it's not just four lines of equal height. Question 25, this is a pharmaceutical one, so the answers are, put, are at the side here. So you've got noradrenaline and phenylephrine are uh, stimulate receptors in the body, resulting in an increased blood pressure. Amphetamine has the same effect, but works indirectly on the body by stimulating production of noradrenaline. The structural fragment acting directly on the receptor is what? So these two act directly, this one does not. So this one is kind of here as a red herring, so we can just score this out. We don't really want to know anything about that. We want to find what is the bit of the molecule that is acting directly on the receptor. So we need to find what is the fragment which is the same in both of these. So 
They both have this OH group. They both have this ring. They both have this part here. They both have CH2 here. And they both have an NH. So this is the bit that is um, the same for both of them. So if we have a look here, so we've got the OH, the ring, and a CH, but we don't have the OH, so this one's not our answer. We've got the OH, the ring, the C, but no OH. We don't have the OH on this one. Here we have the OH, the ring, the C, the H, the OH, the CH2, and the NH. So this one is our answer, D. Question 26. In a UK workplace, the maximum short-term exposure limit for carbon monoxide is 200 ppm in a 15 minute period and we are trying to work out uh, what is the mass of carbon, ca carbon monoxide breathed in at a maximum short term exposure limit. So PPM is equal to one milligram per kilogram. So if we've got 200, that is 200 milligrams per kilogram of air at the short term exposure limit. So if we have 200 milligrams for 1000 grams of air. If we divide that both down by a thousand to get us to one gram, so we're going to have 0.2 milligrams for one gram, and then we're going to multiply back up by 134, so we've got 0.2 times 134, so for 134 grams we would find that we'll have 26.8 milligrams of carbon monoxide being breathed in, so that is B. Question 27. Sodium hydroxide is unsuitable for use as a primary standard because it what? It's corrosive. Sometimes you need to use things that are corrosive. It's readily soluble in water. <coughs> that would make it very good as a primary standard. You want it all to dissolve. It's available in a high degree of purity. We can get it to be quite pure. We, that You would want that to be um, something for your primary standard but it readily absorbs water from the atmosphere. So over time, your sodium hydroxide concentration changes. So that's not good for a primary standard. So D is your answer. Question 29, what volume of 0.25 molar calcium nitrate is required to make by dilution of water 500 centimeters cubed of a solution with a nitrate ion concentration of 0.1 moles per liter? So calcium nitrate, has this as the formula. So for every one mole of calcium ions, you have two moles of nitrate ions. So we need to keep that in mind for the next part of our calculation. So first of all, we're going to calculate how many moles of nitrate ions we would have in our solution that we're going to make. So it's going to be 0 0.1 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.05. So for every two moles of nitrate ions we have one mole of calcium ions so we're going to half this so if we divide that by two so we're going to have 0 0.025 moles of calcium nitrate because for every one mole of this it splits up into these ions. So now we need to know what volume of our original solution we need so we'll have volume is moles divided by concentration. We have 0 0.025 moles of calcium nitrate needed and we have a concentration of 0.25. So when we do that, we get 0.1 liters, which is the same as 100 centimeters cubed. So the answer is B. Okay, question 29. 1.60 grams of an anhydrous metal sulfate, so that means there's no water attached, was dissolved in water and we added excess barium chloride solution to get precipitate of 2.33 grams of barium sulfate. That means that we are completely precipitating out all of the sulfate that was in the original 1.6 grams. So first of all, we are going to work out how many moles of barium sulfate we have. So barium sulfate is BASO4 and the gram formula mass of barium sulfate quite handily is 233 grams. So moles of barium sulfate is 0 0.01. That also is going to be the same as your moles of sulfate that you had in your original sample. So if we work out what mass of sulfate ions we have, 
we have 0 0.96 grams of sulfate and we're going to do this as a percentage of the original so the percentage is 0.96 divided by 1.6 to give us 60 percent and now you just need to work out the percentage of sulfate in each of these so for the copper it's going to be 96 divided by what about 160 and uh, for the magnesium it's 100 it's 96 divided by 120.5 and uh, then we've got 96 divided by 142 for the sodium and 96 divided by 136 for the calcium so you find it's 60 percent for the copper it's 80 percent for the magnesium 68 percent for the sodium and 71 percent for the calcium so copper sulfate is your answer there and the final question in this multiple choice section is 0 0.02 moles of the salt pt PT NHBX Cl2 required 20 centimetres cubed of 4 molar nitric acid to react with all of the NH3 ligands. What is the value of X? So if we work out our moles of acid, so we had 0 0.08 moles of acid reacting, um, and we had 0 0.02 moles of our salt. Um, requiring 0 0.08 moles of the acid so that is a 1 to 4 ratio which would imply that we must have had 4 NH3s in here to react with each of those so the answer is B. Thank you for watching this final video on the Advanced Hire 2016 paper I hope that you found it helpful please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter for regular updates on new videos thanks for watching see you in the next one bye